Hi, James Mingvid. That's a mighty nice year. Today, I want to teach a lesson on listening skills. About a year ago, I did a lesson on listening skills, and I promised in that one to give you a system that you could use to improve at home. And then I decided I wanted to make it better than that. I want you to get instant skills. So today's lesson, instant advanced listening skills. Well, how do you do that? Because instant means immediately. And you're probably thinking I've been practicing for months or years and I still have trouble. We're going to fix that today. If you follow the four steps. The first thing we want to talk about is this. Don't think, just listen. Now, just imagine this. Blah, 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 Crazy, right? Well, people do this all the time, even when they speak their own language. What I'm talking about is they are thinking while someone else is speaking. And that's the problem, because if you have one voice going and then another voice is going, what you're actually doing is carrying on two conversations and you get confused. So I often tell students, don't do that. Don't think. For some people, not thinking is kind of easy, but this is special thinking. I'm saying, don't try and understand what they're saying. Now, if you go to the first video, you go, but that's the opposite of what you said. This is different. In advanced skills, you might notice if I go, Roof, you know, that's a dog. You don't sit there and think, is that a dog or a squirrel or a chicken or a cow? You know, it's a dog. When someone's speaking, just listen. I'm going to help you with something else that will make it easier for you to get the information, even if you don't think. Okay? So just let the information come to you. All right? Now, remember, don't think, just listen, because you can't understand two conversations at once. That's the one in your head and the one you're listening to. That's why usually we only let one person speak at a time. Now, what's the second thing? Well, now you're sitting there listening. Here's a problem. If you listen to somebody for about 10 minutes, a long speech, <laughs> tired is the first thing you're going to get. But that's not even it. You're going to lose information. It's very difficult to listen to something for a long time and keep getting that information and keeping it fresh, especially if you're not thinking. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break it into chunks. Chunks means parts or pieces. So if you have a bigger piece and you break off a part, it's called a chunk. And how do we break into the chunks? That's the second part of the formula. Ask questions. Engage to be engaged. Engage means to take part in, or for some people, get married, right? Do, 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 whatever. You know the wedding song. Anyway, if you engage by asking questions, it brings in your curiosity and it brings your mind or your brain to be fresh, to concentrate. And that's what we need. We need you to focus on what you're hearing. Because you're not actually thinking, by asking the question, it helps you to take that information and break it into chunks. So you're not listening to long speeches. But also by doing that, what you're doing is you're allowing yourself, well, later on for your brain to take the information from the questions to understand, because the question has to be relevant. Relevant means has something to do with the situation at that time, right? Is it relevant? Um, so it will help you thinking. Why are we doing this? Well, this is the instant part, believe it or not, because if you can do this right away, you will start noticing you understand 60, 70, 80% of conversations right away. But I did lie a little bit. You need a little practice at home to make this work. Because once we do this part, this will happen instantly. So let's go over to the board. All right, home practice. Yep, the dreaded H word. I can think of other words like my ex-girlfriend Helen, but that's another story. Home practice is absolutely necessary. And what I mean by this is, we're going to do something else I probably told you not to do, or most teachers say. They say, don't watch movies, they're too difficult, and you have to watch with subtitles. Personally, I disagree with that. I taught classes for years, and I would freak students out. And freak them out means, like, shock them or surprise them. Where they would come in, I'd put on an English movie, where the English people were speaking as fast as I am, <laughs> believe it or not and no subtitles, and they would freak out like, oh, you're crazy, how do you expect us to learn? But within one to two weeks, a lot of these students could get 50, if not 80%, well, I lie, 50 to 60% of the movie, and in two months, 80%. Some of them even would go to the theater and watch the movie in the theater, no subtitles. 
And there's a reason why I don't like subtitles. When I'm speaking to you, words are not appearing under my mouth as I speak. This does not happen in reality. So when somebody says to you, you know, you need subtitles to understand, think about it. There are no subtitles. So I don't think we should use them. Not for advanced skills. If you're doing beginner skills, as I said, watch the first movie that will help you or the first video. So we should look at movies. First thing, no subtitles. The other thing I want you to do is take a chunk. We used that word before, like two or three sentences, maybe five between two people, no more than five. And you play that same chunk over and over again. I recommend if you're just beginning 10 times, down to a minimum of three times when you get really good, three times is all you need and you'll catch most of the information. All right. Now, by doing this, here's what I want you to do. I didn't write it on the board, but now I need you to, <gasps> dum -da -da -dum. you need to listen to me because I'm going to explain. As you play the chunks, what I want you to do, or that scene, is write out every word you hear. Not some, not what you think, but exactly what you hear. When you're finished playing it, either three or up to 10 times. Only then can you put on the subtitles. Yep. But this is different than what other teachers want you to do. What I'm asking you to do is put the subtitles on and compare what you wrote with what it says. Good. The reason why is then you can see what you're missing. And whatever you're missing, you must practice out loud. So if there's a word blasphemy and you've never seen it, of course you've never seen it or heard it before. But if you said the act was blasphemous, you might know the, the, you might know act, but blasphemous you don't know. So practice it. Blasphe, blasphema, blasphemous, until you can recognize it. After you do that with all the missing words, play it again without subtitles. Magic. You will notice instantly you can hear the words. You may know what they, know what they mean, but you'll hear them. And that's extremely important because if you can't identify something, you can't ask anyone to explain it to you, right? Cool. So that's when we can play it with subtitles to help us fill in the gaps. Gap means space. I've got a space here, but gap means space, right? Between two things. Now, finally, once you're finished and we've done all that work here, because it's a lot of work, I want you to watch it one more time, but close your eyes. Human beings are really interesting. They have found in science that when a human loses one sense, hearing, taste, vi uh, vision, or uh, touch, the other ones get better. When you close your eyes, it allows you to listen better or to focus more so you can pick up more information. So to recap, and when we say recap, it means to go over, to give you the important parts. By doing your home practice, I can promise you when you do this, it'll be easy. Now, one small little thing before we forget, things that most teachers don't tell you. There is actually an order of movies you should watch or programs, or let's say media, you should watch to get the most out of your listening. Number one, start with kids programs. Why? I love you, you love me, we're one big happy family. And then they show you pictures. A big heart, I love you, you love me. And they put it up there. I mean, come on. They make it easy for you to get it, and then they explain it first. Next, TV programs. Once you're there and you're bored of it, you're like, I got it, I got all the basics, because it will be basic language you must learn it anyway. Watch something like Friends. Do 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 do. You know, no one knows you. Watch Friends. It's what we call stupid humor. People will <laughs> fall over. They go, oh, he fell, Chandler fell. And you go, oh, fall, that's what he did. <laughs> Stupid comedies. It makes it easy. They don't speak quickly, right? They want the audience to understand. It's very short, 20 minutes maximum. What do we do after that? So first kids movies, then TV programs, easy ones. You want to know what you watch next? Action movies. That's right, action movies. Action movies are made for stupid people. I said it. I love action movies. I wouldn't say I'm stupid, but I love action movies. Why? Because they always explain any hard words. If there's something hard, it'll be catastrophe if this occurs. Someone will run in and the hero will go catastrophe and the little nerd scientist, nerd means uncool, will run in and go catastrophe, bad things will happen and people will die. And the hero will go, oh my gosh, that is bad. 
So then suddenly you understand all the big words, they speak slow enough, so you get everything. All right, so now you're intermediate <laughs> if you can do action movies. From there, I recommend drama and then dark comedies. Drama, they use big words and because they're intellectual and very smart. They won't explain the words to you because they're saying we're sophisticated, you should understand. And finally, dark comedies are good because they play with the language. They won't be falling all over the place. They'll use language in a sophisticated way, which means a high level. So you really have to understand what you're listening to and the language you're working with. By the way, this isn't just for English. You can use this for any language you're trying to learn, okay? But this especially works with English. So if you remember those five types of movies I was telling you about, okay, that you should study in that order, and you follow these rules, you will have absolutely no problem at all learning from movies. I know this is a long video, but I've got one other thing to help you with. That one other thing is how do you get this information? Do you remember when I said this is going to be instant, you still have to go, well, James, how am I going to get this information? Well, I'm going to tell you. There are about five things you should remember when you're trying to get the information. Times. People often say time. They often say dates, numbers, names, and addresses in any conversation. Tom went home at three o'clock and I don't think he's coming back again. So you've got Tom and you've got a time. The other thing people give is important information. And I'm sure you're saying, how do I know it's important information? Well, you've been taking grammar and I've been speaking pretty quickly, so I know you're advanced. So you already know, I'm sure, about superlatives and modals of necessity. When you hear something like never, always, must, or should, Someone's telling you what I'm about to tell you is very important. Yeah? So keep those in mind. Also, when you hear a superlative, most or best, usually important. If you can remember those pieces of information, practice trying to find them when you're listening to the video, your brain will grab the rest of that information and give you complete sentences or ideas of sentences. And because you're practicing, and I like movies, because they are closest to real life. When you are in real life and you're not trying to think at the same time and you're actually asking questions or engaging, you're going to find that almost instantly you're understanding conversations. Don't believe what I say. Try it. And I can almost guarantee you, you're going to be surprised at how quickly you learn. Now, before I take off, because I know you're listening to me carefully now, and this is very important, see, is that very tells you important information. You need to go someplace to do the first lesson. Keep that one first. And where would that be? Those of you who've been with me for a while know it's W, W, W. That's a funny W. Dot ing, as in English, vid, as in video, dot com, where I'm going to be happy to teach you this and other lessons. Mr. E, I'm out.